Okay, so thank you all for coming today to the second installment of the Quantum Fluid in, in uh, Isolation series. So today we have a very special uh, speaker, Professor Dan Thon Sun, who really needs no introduction, but I'll still attempt to do one in, in any way. So Professor Dan Sun got his PhD from the Institute for uh, Nuclear Research in Moscow in 1995. Then he postdoc at the University of Washington from 1995 to 1997. Then he postdoc at MIT Center for Theoretical Physics from 1997 to 1999. After that, he became a professor at uh, Columbia University, where he was a Riken uh, BNL fellow until 2002, when he became a senior fellow at the Institute for Nuclear Theory and a professor in physics at the University of Washington. In 2012, he became the 19th person to hold a university professorship at the University of Chicago, where he is today. So he became uh, Alfred P. Sloan Fellow in 2001. He was a, became an APS Fellow in 2006. He became a Simons Investigator. Uh, uh, he got the Simons, uh, Simons Investigator Award in 2013. And he was elected uh, to the American Academy of Arts and Sciences and the National Academy of Sciences in 2014. And in 2018, most recently, he won a Dirac Medal along with Subir Sajdev and Professor Zhao Wen. He's obviously very well known for his work in strongly correlated matter, including uh, quark gluon plasmas and uh, the emergence of a Dirac fermion in a half field uh, Landau level, the viscosity bound uh, in ADS CFT, the famous K KSS bound. And today he's going to be talking about the phase diagram of a hypothetical isotope of helium. So please help me um, in welcoming him either virtually or by immuting themselves, uh, for Sir Damson. Thank you very much, Joshua. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, can everybody hear me? Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you very much, Joshua. This, that was um, uh, uh, my great um, pleasure to uh, give uh, this talk uh, in, in, the, in the series that, um, that, that uh, I hope you will hear a lot of more, more, more interesting talks. But I'm going to tell you about uh, work that's still to, be, to appear that I have been doing with Misha Stefanov and Home E. Uh, it's about a um, phase diagram of ultra quantum liquids. And I hope to uh, explain to you what I mean by the ultra quantum liquids. So let's first um, remind ourselves of the phase diagram of helium, uh, helium 4 um, to be precise. Um, so helium is the only substance in nature that doesn't solidify uh, as we take the temperature to zero. Um, uh, this is a schematic, schematic uh, phase diagram. At very high pressure, we have a solid phase. Can you, hear the, uh, can you see the cursor as well? Yes, yes, it's okay. very clear. Yeah, and below this pressure, which the value of which I actually don't remember, uh, we have the fluid phases, the uh, superfluid phase at low temperature and the normal fluid phase uh, at higher temperature. And as in any other uh, fluid, uh, there is a line that separates the fluid phase from the gas phase, which terminate at the so-called critical point. So that critical point in this talk I will uh, we will refer to as the liquid gas critical point. Uh, the solid lines on this graph uh, are first order phase transition. The, these lines are first order phase transition. On the other hand, the phase transition between the superfluid phase and the normal phase is a second order phase transition. So in this talk, we are not going to be concerned about the solid phase. We are not going to be uh, very concerned about the uh, phases at very high pressure. So I'm going to, we are just concentrate our attention on the um, phase diagram at lower pressure in which the gas phase and we have the normal phase and the superfluid phase. So since this is uh, the first time I, I, I talk about this subject, um, I would like the seminar to be a bit uh, more informal. So if you have any question during the talk, please uh, let me know. So um, one way to model a liquid, uh, including helium, is to uh, assume that this liquid consists of particles and they interact with each other through a potential. 
which is attractive at long distances and is uh, repulsive at short distances. So one uh, traditional potential that people use uh, to think about this problem is the so-called Lennart-Jones potential, which has the one over R to the sixth tail due to the uh, Van der Waals interaction between uh, neutral atoms. And at uh, short distances, it has a, a repulsive core. Uh, Lennart and Jones choose that to be the 12th power of R, but it can be, it, um, the, what is important is just that there is a repulsion uh, at very short distances. Now, uh, when we talk about um, classical liquid, uh, classical gases, uh, all we need to know is this potential, and we can put the problem in the computer and simulate and try to find the phase diagram. But we are going to uh, talk about quantum liquids like helium. And for this liquid, uh, we can characterize the uh, quantum effect, the magnitude of the quantum effects in the liquid by the so-called de Boer parameter. that was introduced by de Boer sometime in late 1930s. That parameter lambda is uh, the following combination. So here h bar divided by sigma square root of m epsilon. Epsilon is the depth of the potential. Sigma is the length scale, basically the, uh, on, for this Lennard Jones potential, it is the position where the potential is zero. And h bar divided by sigma square root of m epsilon is roughly speaking uh, the magnitude of uh, quantum uh, zero point motion of uh, the atoms if we try to arrange them in a, in, a, in a crystal. When lambda is much less than one, we are dealing with classical liquid or solid where the zero point motion are very small. So let's compare two uh, li uh, liquids. So one is uh, helium and the other is hydrogen. So you can find in textbooks a uh, table similar to this where they give you the uh, best fit value for the depth of, of the Lennard Jones potential and the size of the potential. So for helium, the depth is about 10 Kelvin and hydrogen. Uh, uh, molecules uh, have uh, also interacting through a potential that is similar to the natural potential, but the depth of this potential is 37 Kelvin. So if you put these numbers into the formulas on the previous transparency, you find the de Boer parameter for helium is about 0 0.43 and for hydrogen is about 0 0.27, 28. Um, helium, hydrogen is lighter than, uh, than helium, but in contrast to helium, uh, it forms a, loss, a solid state at zero temperature. And you can see here the reason it does that, although um, the molecules are light, but the interaction between the molecules are quite, um, quite uh, strong. And the, the, the zero point motion is less in the crystal as the amplitude that is uh, less compared to that of helium. Imagine now um, uh, that we can tune the uh, mass of the helium atom. So let, let us ask a theoretical question. What would happen if we make helium, if we have uh, some isotope of helium where the nucleus is still boson, still bosonic, but the mass of that nucleus is less than four atomic unit. What would happen then? Now we know that the potential energy between two atoms uh, can be computed through the Born-Oppenheimer approximation in which we fix the position of the nuclei and then solve the Schrodinger equation for the um, ele electrons around these two nuclei. So the potential between two helium atoms should not change should not change uh, if we change the mass of the nucleus. Uh, assuming that the mass of the nucleus is still much larger than the mass of the, ele the electron. Uh, so the potential is still the same. The uh, parameter epsilon and sigma in the Lennard Jones potential is the same, uh, but we lower m. That means that the De Boer parameter lambda becomes more quantum. The fluctuations 
the zero pawns fluctuation of the position of the uh, of the atoms become stronger at uh, at, uh, at lower mass. And thus, what we can say is that if the mass of the helium atom is reduced to be less than four atomic units, then helium would that helium would not solidify at zero temperature and zero pressure. But one can still ask the question, what happened uh, with the phase diagram? So let's think about what happened to the superfluid phase transition. Naively, one can think about the superfluid phase transition as the BEC phase transition. Uh, that is really a, a very gross uh, approximation, very uh, root crude approximation. But as a starting point, we can think about the TC temperature, TC as the TC of a BC phase transition in a uh, non-interacting gas of bosons with uh, density N and mass M. We look at the textbook, we will find that this TC is some constant time H bar square N two third divided by M. Basically, this TC is obtained by comparing the distance between particles and the de Broglie wavelength of this part, the thermal de Broglie wavelength of this particle. But from this formula, one see that when we increase, when we decrease the mass M of the nuclear of the nucleus, TC goes up, uh, assuming that the density remains constant. We know that the density of a fluid is determined by the minimum of the uh, Lennard Jones potential. So it's probably a good approximation to assume that the density of the fluid phase remains constant. So then this TC goes up as we take M, uh, if we decrease M. Now what happened to the temperature of the liquid gas phase transition? Now we know that in the classical regime, the phase diagram of a liquid or a gas does not depend on the nuclear mass. That can be seen uh, very easily from the partition function of a, of a system of particles with coordinates xi, momenta pi. In the classical uh, statmec, we know that the partition function is an integral over the phase space of n particles of the exponents of the Hamiltonian. And the Hamiltonian is the sum of the kinetic energy and the potential energy. But we can also uh, integrate in this uh, partition function over all the momenta and just get a rather boring factor in front of the uh, integral over the uh, coordinates. And so all the non-trivial physics of a classical gas or a liquid can be simulated by just taking the integral over the positions of the particle, uh, disregarding the integral over the momentum of the, of the particles. And since this is a perfect um, analytic function, all the non-trivial phase, uh, phase uh, transitions, critical points on the phase diagram of a classical liquid should not depend on M, M factor out. So the, uh, mm, if we, we can, we can uh, assume uh, that the, um, the, um, the liquid gas, the, the liquid gas temperature would not go down or up for helium if we re reduce the mass of the helium nucleus. Uh, but actually we are interested in a, a, a question that might, uh, where this approximation might not work, namely the effect of quantum physics on the position on the liquid gas phase transition. So we have to ask what are the, do we have, do you know anything about quantum correction to the position of the liquid gas critical point? And here there are, um, we can look at the isotope effect uh, in for example, neon uh, or uh, do um, simulations. And it's uh, um, pretty well known, it's known now that the critical temperature of the liquid gas phase transition goes down with the decreasing nuclear mass. Different isotopes of neon has, have slightly different critical temperature, but the lighter isotope has a smaller critical temperature. And so here we can imagine the following happen. If we lower the mass of the helium nucleus, 
the superfluid phase transition that happens at temperature about 2.2 Kelvin should go up, while the temperature of the liquid gas critical point around 5.2 Kelvin in helium should go down. And what happens, we can ask, what happens if these two uh, temperature collide, or could it be that they would pass through each other, like the superfluid would happen at higher temperature than the liquid gas critical um, point? The simplest scenario that one can imagine is that at some value of the mass of the nucleus, these two temperatures would be the same namely that the critical point would be uh, also uh, the, the starting point of uh, a line of the uh, of, uh, uh, superfluid phase transition. So that would be a very interesting possibility if we can have a critical point that would uh, be a critical point of both uh, liquid gas phase transition and um, uh, um, superfluid phase transition. Such a critical point will have an enhanced symmetry, would be an interesting possibility to investigate. So let's just try to see if that critical point can be, um, can be, uh, can be um, investigated. And a very short um, exercise with Landau theory of phase transition tell us that this simple scenario can be ruled out immediately. So how do we do that? Let us try to write down a Landau free energy as a function of two order parameters. One order parameter psi, a complex order parameter, is the order parameter of the superfluid phase transition. One can think about psi as the superfluid, um, as, the, uh, as the condensate. Uh, psi squared is the fraction, superfluid fraction. And another uh, order parameter, phi, is the order parameter of the liquid gas uh, phase transition. Uh, liquid and a gas um, do not differ from each other by symmetry. So this phi can characterize something like the density. The density of a fluid is larger than the density of a gas. So this uh, theory must have the symmetry of a U1 with respect to U1 phase rotation of psi. Uh, but with respect to this phi, there should not be any symmetry. There is no Z2 symmetry, for example, when we take this phi goes to minus phi. So psi is complex and phi is a real order parameter. We only have the U1 symmetry with respect to the complex phase rotation of the complex order parameter. So let us try to write down such a free energy. So if we uh, write them down, so this would be the term uh, that we would obtain up to fourth order in the, uh, um, uh, in the order parameter. So on the first line here, I write down the uh, term that contains only phi. The phi is the order parameter distinguishing the liquid and the gas or the density. So here you have phi square, phi to the fourth, phi. We don't have Z2 symmetry, but uh, so we can write out any polynomial. Um, so we can write to up to the fourth order, we can have also the phi cube, phi cube term. But a phi cube term can be eliminated by shifting the, uh, the parameter phi. So I have used up that uh, shift uh, the freedom in def defining phi to get rid of the phi cube, and these are the only term that I, I get. So here you can see that this is just the uh, um, free energy of, um, of, uh, of uh, Ising uh, magnet in a magnetic field. And so there is a critical point, a Z2 critical point, that happens when T is equal to zero and H is equal to zero. So that critical point can be identified with the uh, liquid gas uh, phase transition, uh, the, critical, uh, the critical point of the liquid gas phase transition. The second line here is the line that uh, separates that, that, um, uh, that is the terms in the free energy that contains only psi, the superfluid order parameter. So here we have psi squared and psi four term. Uh, the coefficient in front of the psi squared term uh, is written as uh, T plus M tilde, so it's a different 
different from the coefficient in terms of the phi square here. You can imagine, so um, we, you are motivated in the choice of notation by thinking that this T is the temperature. As T increases, the system becomes more uh, disordered. And so T, when PT is larger than zero, uh, the, um, the, uh, we are, would be uh, uh, above the liquid gas critical point. So the phase transition in the superfluid case would happen at a different temperature. So we choose the notation right here is T plus M tilde. And then T changes both this, uh, both the two other parameters would tend to become more disordered. And now we have to write down terms that couple phi and psi. And there are two possible terms here, phi psi square and phi square, I'm sorry for the, typo here, phi square, psi square. Up to the fourth order, this is the only term that is consistent with U1 symmetry. Uh, so here this alpha uh, physically is the, um, the, 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 um, the coupling between the two order parameters that would favor superfluidity in the phase that has higher density. So if phi, if, imagine that we have two phases that coexist with each other on two sides of the a line of the phase transition between liquid and gas. A one phi corresponds to a liquid, one phi corresponds to a gas. This term would favor superfluidity in a phase with larger density in the liquid phase if alpha is larger than, than zero. And so here we can ask ourselves how many uh, fine tunings we need to make in order to reach the critical point. How many, um, uh, um, relevant uh, terms in this, uh, in this uh, potential. So there are, it turned out to be that the answer is four. We have the mass terms of the phi square, the mass term of psi order parameter, this magnetic field H that, think about this H as the pressure, and the up, upper, the, and the alpha parameter coupling parameter. So there are four relevant uh, parameters, but recall that here we are tuning only three parameters, the pressure, temperature, and the mass of this nucleus. And so uh, in general, we will miss that critical point. That is, if we uh, try to uh, take helium and try to lower the, 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 uh, the, the, the mass of the helium, without additional fine tuning, we would not be able to reach that um, interesting critical point. You can, uh, oh, we, 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 something would happen before that. So what would happen before that? So in order to uh, answer this question, let, let, let us do a simple exercise. Let's try to just numerically investigate the mean field theory that I have written down in the previous slide. So here I just, Re, have rewritten the free energy, except that I put this coefficient alpha to zero. And then there is another coefficient beta that was phi square, psi square for simplicity. Uh, we put that to, just to zero. And we expect that this, that term phi square, psi square will not uh, alter very much the qualitative behavior of this phase diagram. So here, um, roughly speaking, we can think about this M star as the mass of the atom. Uh, T is the temperature, that when we change the temperature, the coefficient of phi square and psi square will change. And H, we can think about this H as a pressure. Roughly speaking though, in real world, the mass and temperature and pressure will be all functions of this T, M, T, and H. Now in the numeric, we will put U equal to one and lambda equal one half. You can choose other values, but these are, um, the values that uh, I have um, data for. So let's consider one. Uh, so I, I, I will take M's tilde and then uh, reduce it from some large value to a smaller value. So for M star equal to five, you see this uh, three, uh, I've met here, we've met here a 3D plot of the uh, liquid gas order parameter phi in the square of the superfluid order parameter. So you see here, there is a line of first order phase transition where the system has the jump in density, so this jump in density here and the jump density disappear at this point. 
And then there is a line here where we have a um, transition clearly from non-superfluid phase or superfluid phase. So when this M tilde is equal to five, five, we have a typical phase diagram of similar in terms of topology uh, of the phase diagram, the phase diagram of real helium, of a critical point here, and then a line of second order phase transition between a superfluid and a, uh, and a normal phase, normal fluid phase. Let's reduce M. So now M tilde is equal to one. Now we see that uh, the structure of these phases are the same, but there is a jump in the order parameter in the uh, density and in the superfluid order parameter that is finite. The lines separating the superfluid phase and the normal phase is no longer a second order line. It's a line that looks like a first order phase transition at low pressure and becoming second order phase transition at higher pressure. In other words, the line, there is a tricritical point here on the line of the superfluid phase transition. One can um, imagine what happened if uh, the mass of the helium goes down here, these two uh, temperature approach each other, but there is at some mass of the helium, there is a tricritical point that emerge and then it will move up. And then when it moves up, part of the uh, phase transition between a superfluid and a normal phase become first order. And above that, it's second order. It's possible to understand qualitatively what happened. Why, as we try to move these two phase transitions temperature close to each other, the superfluid phase transition becomes first order. So let's think about what happened with the, uh, with the potential. So here, if I um, um, expand the potential uh, in the fluctuation of the density around the minimum, I would find that there is some term delta phi squared times one over two chi. This chi is usually called the susceptibility. Um, and then there is a coupling of the density with the superfluid parameter. And then there is a, and the um, superfluid uh, uh, cycle of four term. When we integrate out the uh, fluctuation of the liquid gas order parameters, uh, we would induce a term phi psi to the four. From these two terms, we induce a term that is proportional to the susceptibility. But now we know that the, in, near the liquid gas critical point, the susceptibility goes to infinity or the coefficient in front of this delta phi square term goes to zero. So that in the process of um, this coupling between the uh, superfluid and the liquid gas order parameter induces effectively in the, in the effective potential for the superfluid order parameter uh, psi to the fourth term with the negative coefficient. So that negative coefficient at some point would, uh, this negative term at some point would overwhelm the uh, positive term in the psi to the fourth. So we have an effective potential of uh, the superfluid order parameter whose psi to the fourth coefficient is negative. And that means that this uh, phase transition has to be first order. It's, um, uh, the potential is uh, no longer stabilized by the, the psi to the fourth term, but psi to the sixth term. And, and that uh, when you draw the, 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 the potential, you would see that the phase transition becomes first order. Let's go down a little bit further. When M tilde is equal to minus one, this M tilde is not the physical helium mass, just some parameter that we assume would change in the same direction as we change the mass of the helium. When M tilde is equal to minus one, something interesting happened. We can see here only one line that separates the uh, normal and the superfluid phase. So it, uh, if I draw schematically the phase diagram, it looks like just a single line. I just draw for some. Uh, a straight line here can, can be a, 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 a curved line in the PT phase diagram, but uh, this line has a first order uh, piece 
ending at the tricritical point and continue as a second order of phase transition at this value of m tilde. So something must happen. Uh, at m, m tilde equal to one, we have this kind of phase diagram. And what happened uh, is that this critical point of the liquid gas phase transition moves to the, to the left. And at some point it completely disappeared under the line separating the superfluid in the normal phase. No longer this uh, uh, phase transition between the gas phase and the normal fluid phase completely disappear. And at the end, uh, we will get the phase diagram, which, on, which only has a phase a transition between a superfluid phase and a normal uh, gas phase. So to summarize what happened in this um, uh, mean field theory, uh, we realized several uh, phase diagram. The first phase diagram at high value of M tilde looks like just that of helium. And then when you decrease the mass, M tilde, the parameter that supposedly seem, uh, parameterizes the mass of the helium atom, we get an intermediate phase diagram in which we have a, a similar structure as the phase diagram of helium, but the phase transition uh, between superfluid and a normal fluid can be first order. And then at lower value of the mass, the phase diagram becomes just uh, we will have just one single uh, phase transition between superfluid and a normal uh, fluid and normal gas. Um, in the uh, mean field theory that I have written down, this uh, transition happens at some value of in tilde that can be analytic, analytically computed. Now let's go even to uh, le uh, um, to discuss the question: What happened further? If we lower the, temp the the mass of the helium further, there is we can argue that there is another phase transition, uh, so-called unbinding phase transition. It was first um, considered by Wilhelm Zwerger in uh, very recently. It is a phase transition in which self-bound liquid disappears. So here's what happened in this, um, um, with this phase diagram. There is a tricritical point. As we change the mass, the position of this tricritical point goes down. And at some point, that tricritical point will uh, be exacted at zero pressure, zero temperature, and then completely disappear. And then after that, what happened is that the, uh, the, this transition becomes second order the self-bound liquid phase, um, a, a, a phase of uh, the liquid phase at zero, that exists at zero temperature and zero pressure ne no longer exists. And um, Twerker uh, showed that the vicinity of this uh, unbinding phase transition point can be studied reliably. In helium, uh, that phase transition happens uh, around the mass of the nucleus that is about 1.6 um, atomic unit. So here in this graph, I'm drawing uh, and copy that from a paper by, uh, um, by um, British authors, Gomez, that's the other author, but they have computed the uh, scattering length between two atoms interacting through uh, um, Leonard Jones potential. So you see here that this, so this lambda, as we go from the right to the left, the mass of the nucleus decreases. So each time the scattering length passes infinity, one bound state disappears. Uh, so here at this point, uh, we have just one bound state in the Leonard Chon potential. The scattering length is infinite and it turned out that this point is very close to the physical point. The mass that corresponds to infinite scattering length is around four, slightly less than four um, atomic unit. And then as you go further, there is another point when the scattering length crosses zero. And that happened when the mass of the nucleus is about 1.6. Uh, atomic unit. So 
in this regime, when that's further um, considered, uh, the system can be described by um, simple field theory, uh, many body theory, in which the Lagrangian uh, contains, or Hamiltonian contains just the kinetic terms, the chemical potential, two, two body interaction, and the three body interaction. The two body interaction has a strength that is uh, proportional to the scattering length of, uh, between the particles. So if we are um, slightly above 1.6 atomic units, the scattering length would be z uh, less than zero. But as you approach 1.58 on 1.6 atomic units, the scattering length goes to zero. Uh, the side of the six terms uh, is characterized by a coupling constant that was first uh, talked about by Shinatan, first introduced by Shinatan in the paper in 2008. Um, he introduced the so-called three-body scattering hypervolume that can be defined uh, by looking at the uh, asymptotics of the three-body uh, wave function at infinity. Um, but one can also think about this parameter as the parameter that gives us the energy of uh, dilute gas of atoms uh, in the limit when the uh, two body scattering length goes to zero. The energy density would be m cubed times this constant d. And reliable calculations uh, can be done uh, if a to the fourth is much less than d. a has the dimension of length, d has the dimension of length to the fourth. And when a to the fourth is much larger than d, and d, if d is larger than zero, a lot of things can be obtained from this uh, Lagrangian of the, from this field theory by reliable calculation. So, uh, for example, in Zwerger's work, he has found that when t is equal to zero, we have a self-bound fluid with density is given by a ratio of a over d. So we see that when a is negative uh, but small, we have a self-bound fluid at uh, zero zero temperature, zero pressure, coexisting with vacuum, just a droplet of fluid surrounded by vacuum with density is equal to minus a over d that goes to zero as d goes to zero. That, that's the reason why um, we can do, um, we can treat this uh, uh, problem using a uh, field theory because all the interactions are um, universal, just local interaction that can be parameterized with the uh, uh, help of a few parameters, g and capital G. At finite temperature, we can uh, also do reliable calculation. We can integrate out the Matsubara mode. We get a uh, effective theory for the zero uh, Matsubara mode, uh, and we can just study this theory. Turn out that um, the um, we can argue that in the regimes where uh, a to the fourth much larger than d, only these diagrams, um, tadpole type diagram, need to be calculated in order to arrive to the three-dimensional effective theory. And in the three-dimensional effective theory, we can also use just classical approximation. We don't have to compute loop in three dimensions, compute uh, things like um, effect. So, so we can treat that problem classically. The result of this calculation is that we find a tricritical point uh, with some temperature that depends on the scattering length and the three-body scattering volume. And that uh, tricritical temperature goes to zero as two third power of the uh, of the scattering length. Uh, in other words, two third power of the distance from the uh, uh, from the um, from from the mass to the critical mass of the helium. And at the tricritical point, the uh, uh, the system has the density that is two ninth of the density of the self bound liquid at t equal to zero can also find, for example, how the on the coexistent curve, the density in the gas phase in the liquid phase uh, changes. So the gas phase has a density that that increases uh, um, increases um, um, as a two third power of temperature, and the liquid phase has a, uh, a density that goes down as a function of temperature, and the two density approach approach each other when the um, when we approach the uh, tricritical temperature. So we can compute a lot of things using this theory, using this few theory. Now, let me talk about possible physical realization of the um, 
this system. A lot of that, a lot of what I'm going to talk about are very speculative. Um, we, uh, in the real world, uh, a way to change the mass of the helium nucleus. Um, what is given by nuclear physics is what we get. And in nuclear um, physics, we know that there are two bosonic isotopes of helium, helium-6 and helium-8. Um, helium-3 uh, is a stable, uh, the other stable isotope of helium, but it is a fermionic isotope, so we are not going to talk about it. Helium-6 and helium-8 uh, have surprisingly large um, lifetimes. They decay uh, with a half-life of 0 0.8 seconds and 0 0.1 seconds. And both these lifetimes are very large compared to the microscopic uh, scale in, um, say, if you make a, can make a fluid, can make a condensed matter of helium-6 and helium-8, in principle, we have a large, uh, rather large uh, time to study it. Uh, not much is known uh, about the phase diagrams of helium-6 and helium-8. Um, there are in works done a long time ago, and people suggested that they would become solid uh, at, um, at zero temperature and zero pressure. Um, but questions like, can they be, is there a superfluid part of the phase diagram? We still not know. But we are not very interested in the heavier isotope of helium, the helium-6 and helium-8 would be more classical than helium-4. We are interested in um, effectively lighter isotope of helium, but unfortunately helium-2 does not exist. Helium-2 protons uh, do, not, um, do not form a bound state. So can we do something? So that's uh, uh, one idea that you know, uh, one can uh, think about is so-called muonic matter. So that picture, this picture I got from a book, uh, from, a, from an article by Don Mueller, when he speculates that if I take usual, when we take usual matter and immerse it in a medium with a large chemical potential for anti, for electron antineutrinos, then the uh, electron can be converted into muon. So if we can take some some object and convert all the electron into muon, the size of the atoms would be shrink, would shrink, would, would, would shrink by, 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 by a factor of 207, the ratio of mass of the muon to electron. So a person would become 200 times smaller. Uh, uh, I'm not sure that I understand why it becomes much heavier, but the size would become much smaller. So imagine that we can do that, then we have uh, we can ask the question, what is the, what is the phase diagram of different substances uh, when we replace all the electrons by muon? Muon has a lifetime of, um, of, of two uh, microseconds. Still small, but still large compared to, um, to like picoseconds or, uh, or femtoseconds, typical time scale of uh, atomics or, uh, or the interaction between particle and the fluid. So let's uh, let's play with these muonic atoms. We know that um, we can um, let's let's define something that we call the effective helium mass. That is the mass of a helium isotope that correspond that would have the same De Boer parameter as a given substance. We know that replacing electron by muon, effectively what we do, what happens when we replace electron with muon is to decrease the mass of the nucleus by a factor of two hundred and seven. Um, because everything depends only on the ratio of the mass of the uh, nucleus and the electron. So if you take, um, if you take for example, different substances um, and read out what is the de Boer parameter of, a, um, of what, what is the mass of the, the effective mass of a helium isotope that would have the same de Boer parameter as such a substance, we find that, for example, neon, everything except for helium would have uh, would, would, would be very, very classical. Hydrogen would correspond to isotope of helium uh, of mass uh, 9.5, while oxygen about 700. But once we replace all the electron by muons, um, the, uh, the corresponding isotope of helium become much more quantum. So for example, take argon. Argon is a very classical gas, but 
if we replace all the electrons by muons, uh, the de Boer parameter is equivalent to that of, uh, of, uh, of helium-4, basically. So this is 2.4, but yeah, we take a lighter isotope of argon, argon to create it to be exactly 4. So we can predict that if we can make argon with muons, then it will have the phase diagram similar to that of, 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 um, of helium. That means that there is a uh, superfluid, um, superfluid uh, muonic argon. Uh, that would have a uh, critical temperature of about 5,000 Kelvin. And if you look at this table, a neon would be much beyond the re regime that we are considering, uh, very gas-like, that is, they, they don't have, they don't form a self-bound fluid, but nitrogen, oxygen, uh, met methane, oxide, carbon oxide, they would have, uh, they would all correspond to an interesting range of, um, of, of, of the Boer parameter where the phase diagram can show different phases, fluid phase, uh, first order phase transition between fluid and liquid uh, and etc. for example. We don't know exactly uh, where these uh, values would put us in the, um, in the, in the range, um, but uh, they form in the, they, they will all uh, lies between 1.6 and 4. Another possibility is to take hydrogen and replace all protons by charge one particles with a lesser mass. And in this case, the de Boer parameter also increases. The effective, effectively, we have an isotope of helium with a mass that is equal to uh, a nine, uh, to, to one divided, to 9.5 times the mass of this particle, or one divided by 135, the value of the mass of this particle divided by the mass of the electrons. For example, when the proton is replaced by muons, positive muons, anti-muons, then this factor is 207. So effectively, we, we have here a mass, a, a, a gas of something called muonium, a hypothetical substance uh, molecules that consist of two muons, two positively charged muons and two electrons. And we can predict here that it will not uh, uh, form a self-bound liquid state will have a phase diagram similar to that of a repulsive Bose gas. Uh, uh, it would be interesting if, this, uh, if, uh, if the proton can be replaced by something that has a mass between 300 and 800 electron masses for this uh, number to be between 1.6 and 4. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have an elementary particle uh, sufficiently long-lived with a um, with the, um, with the mass in, within this range. But it would be interesting to um, find, for example, a solid in which one can make a, 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 a matter consisting of uh, by excitons. So an exciton is the bound state of a hole and uh, an electron. Uh, and two excitons can form something called a, a, a by exciton. So if uh, we have a solid in which the hole has an effective mass 300, from 300 times to 800 times larger than electrons, then we would be able to re possibly realize some interesting uh, phase diagram of bi bi exciton matter in which uh, the bi exciton would condense, may condense into a liquid um, a superfluid like, like helium. Um, Possibly that phenomenon also worked in 2D. Uh, we don't know what is the range that would need, uh, we would need in 2D to realize such interesting um, superfluid. Um, but, um, but in 2D, we know system in which a hole can have very large mass compared to the electron. For example, in system with flat band, like twisted by layer graphene, one band is very flat. So if that, we have, we have a hole on this band, that hole would have a, mass much larger uh, than the mass of the electron on the, on the next uh, non-flat band. So let me conclude. Um, we have seen that there are interesting possibilities um, for liquid uh, more quantum than helium. Uh, if we uh, allow the mass, if we just take simple uh, lennard jones potential but vary the mass, we can, uh, we can argue that the phase diagram in the intermediate regime between maybe around 1.6 and 4 atomic units can be very interesting. Um, 
system of bosons can be um, can be simulated. Uh, there is no sign problem for interacting bosons. So there is a ongoing numerical work by Massimo Puninsegni, uh, Josef Kora, and Shi Wei Shi Shi Wei Zhang when um, we were trying to 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 look at different uh, uh, basically heliums with different masses, uh, and, and and we see very interesting. Um, behavior. Uh, um, it will be interesting to find field theory uh, that can realize, uh, in addition to the uh, liquid, the, the superfluid phase transition, also a, uh, a critical point uh, or a, a liquid gas phase transition. But uh, we have not been able to find any theory where reliable calculation can be done. So thank you very much. That's the end of my talk, and I'll be happy to answer questions. Okay, so do we have any uh, questions? Maybe uh, raise your hand electronically or you can just start asking it. Uh, I have a question. Uh, I, I guess I got confused when you say if the electrons are replaced by muons, the effective mass changes by 200 times I actually don't understand why. So let's go back. To, uh, so, to, so one way to think about that is to uh, think about the Boer parameter. So yeah. when we um, change, take, take for example, um, like hydrogen for a hydrogen atom. When we replace electrons by a muon, the Bohr, the Bohr radius uh, uh, is reduced by a factor of 200 because the Bohr radius is uh, is h bar some something that is one over m in the, um, in the this m in the denominator? So, so the, the the atom shrink by a factor of two hundred. So sigma change by two hundred. Epsilon is the Rydberg scale of epsilon is is e v Rydberg, and when we replace electron by muon, the Rydberg changes by um, by 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 two hundred by two hundred times. So epsilon increases by 200 times and sigma uh, decreases by 200 times. So that makes the the Boer parameter increased by square root of 200. Okay, mm -hmm. so that is equivalent to keeping sigma and epsilon unchanged and decreasing the mass by a factor of 200. Okay. Okay. So Professor Bonasagni, you had a question. Yes, I um, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. So, um, yeah. very interesting seminar. I enjoyed it. I just wanted to make a comment. Initially, you talked about hydrogen, and you argued that the reason it does not undergo a superfluid transition, but rather it solidifies at low temperature, has to do with the depth of, of the attractive well of the potential. Mm -hmm. um, not correct? It, it's actually not like that. Um, it's actually sigma. Uh, the, 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 it has a greater value of sigma with respect to helium. If you had the same identical value of sigma as in helium, you could actually lower, I mean, you could actually make the well depth three times uh, deeper as it is in hydrogen and still uh, have a superfluid transition. There's numerical work showing that. So it's actually not, not the well depth. Really? So it's uh, the... Um, uh, the um the uh, Leonard Jones approximation breaks down? No, no. Somehow. So um, let, me, let me be very uh, specific. So the, the, the value of epsilon for, um, for hydrogen is 36.96. Mm -hmm. And sigma is 2.94. Mm -hmm. Now, in helium, epsilon goes down by almost a factor of three, more than a factor of three, 10.22. Yes. And sigma goes down to 2.556. So, you know, what is it? 20%. Yes. Now, if, you, if I were to do, which I did, uh, a simulation of a kind that would show the superfluid transition in helium-4, mm -hmm. by keeping, keeping the value of sigma as it is in helium-4 and increasing right. the well depth of this strange helium-4 by a factor of three, I would still get a superfluid. Oh, really? Yeah. But but do you have you you don't have solid? Uh, no, you don't have. Okay, I see. Uh -huh. uh, we should talk about that. That's, that's sure. very interesting. Yeah, I have a reference. Yeah. Yeah, it's very interesting. Thank you.
Can you, I'm, I'm sorry, can you experimentally realize superfluid hydrogen in that case then? So, uh, uh, you, cannot, you cannot experimentally make the world that smaller or larger. <laughs> Okay. Uh, any other questions? Can I ask a question? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, today's talk is mainly focusing on the uh, static or the phase diagram of the uh, some interesting way to increase mm -hmm. or to to increase the effect of the quantumness. And uh, do you have any how to say interesting? Uh, can Can you expect uh, some interesting phenomena along the real time uh, directions of the Perhaps um, in, uh, um, only near the tricritical point there could be some mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I. I don't see um, many um, interesting directions. But the tricritical point would have uh, different um, real-time dynamics. Mm -hmm. So, so in what sense that it is uh, interesting or what? Well, I haven't thought about that, but I, if, if, if by interesting one, um, so at, at first uh, I was interested in this critical point because there could be, if this critical point is realized, then we have a lot of universal dynamics mm -hmm. or universal uh, from, um, statics or, uh, or dynamics, but that isn't realized. So if mm -hmm. by interesting one means um, universal, uh, long distance physics. The only thing I can think of is the this uh, tricritical point here. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Zen B, you had a question. Yeah, can I ask about the? Uh, so you decrease the parameter m to be negative, and then this tricritical point move closer to zero in the PT plan, right? So what um, eventually it happens? Yeah. So so if take the m further negative, what happens? Oh, if I take this m further than this minus m, I think yeah. this point just simply move. But in this in this um, mean field theory, nothing interesting happens. The phase diagram would still so look exactly well, like this. Eventually to zero or not? We don't have zero uh, as such. Yeah, there's some. Um, and all the parameters in this model are somehow connected to temperature or um, or pressure, but we don't know the exact scale. And so, oh, okay. from this point on, I have to somehow um, uh, use a different a different model. Basically, um, this I, I think the utility of the mean field theory uh, stops here. Mm -hmm. and after this, I'm connecting to an old work. To a, New work by by William Atzwerker and argue that from this point on we can connect to his uh, his work. I see. I see. Could, could you comment on a little bit on this self bound liquid? Why is called self bound liquid? It's self bound in the sense that if you take um, n particles where n is a large number, mm -hmm. then it will form a bound state. The bound state have um, density equal to minus a divided by d. So if this, if you take this theory and mm -hmm. make g negative, but capital G positive, basically mm -hmm. the, the, the energy uh, functional, the energy per particle would be, uh, would be negative. Uh, uh, some, if you plot the energy per particle, it's go down and then up. Go down because this term has a negative coefficient and go mm -hmm. up because of this. And so at the minimum of energy per particle is this, this density. I see. So, so at that yeah. point, two helium atoms form a bound state or is it right? So two, yeah, so, so let me, let, let's go back here. So here, two atoms of helium form a bound state, very weak bound state with a binding energy about one millikelvin. The depth of the potential, remember, is 10 Kelvin. So there is a very um, there is an accidental fine tuning in our work. Two uh, two atoms of helium form bound state. When we cross, when you make m smaller, just just slightly smaller than the physical value, we are in the regime where there is no bound state. 
two atoms do not form a bound state, but three atoms do form a bound state. Uh, so in the real world, three, uh, three helium atoms form bound state with binding energy 100 millikelvin, 100 times larger than two body. So mm -hmm. but as you approach this point, the, where these arrows go, uh, this three body, three, four body, five body bound state slowly disappear. And as you go cr across this point, no, no number of particles can form bound state. So in the thermodynamic limit, uh, the bound state always appear up to this point, but the number, the critical number of particles that can form a bound state increases as one approaches this point. Mm -hmm. So whether the particles form a bound state is not a few body statement, but a many body statement? Yeah, close to this A equal to zero point. Uh, it's uh, basically the, uh, the, um, the 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 competition between the um, the the, uh, the, uh, the 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 energy, this um, potential energy, and the kinetic energy that is the, basically the boundary of this this, uh, this 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 droplet. So the droplet has to be much larger to be bound. Uh, and there's a many body statement. Yeah, become more more and more body. It's unclear, for example, I actually don't know when the three body bounds it disappears. That may be, uh, uh, may, the answer may exist in the literature, but I don't, I don't know. I thought this scattering length is just a two body property. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, uh, but for three body, we need more information. So uh, we can ask question, for example, for uh, Leonard Jones potential, for example, where the three body bounds it. Disappear. But now, in the presence of many atoms, are there still three body bound state? No, it's, uh, when you have many body states, that's, that's a many body state when it doesn't have the notion of two body bound state in the many body state. Is, is that your question? Yeah, so, uh, so uh, just uh, trying to understand, uh, it seems uh, when you said the bound state, you are referring to the three body case or few body case. But when you say the phase, you are referring to the many body context. Yeah, here is the phase. So here, if I go along this line, I have um, coexistence between a high density phase and so-called fluid and the low density phase that is a gas. When you go along this line to zero pressure and zero temperature, the gas phase becomes vacuum. It's nothing. The fluid phase becomes just a, a, a droplet of, 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 of fluid. Uh, you see that, for example, um, uh, you can take, uh, take helium. It, it exists as a, as, a, as, a, as a phase in equilibrium with the vacuum. Any other questions? So I had um, one question. Could you go back to your phase diagram for m tilde equals negative one? Yes. So does this seem to, does this imply that this will always be a superfluid for any temperature as long as I go up in pressure? Uh, yes. So this okay. um, assume that. Um, um, but that is the case even for uh, repulsive Bose gas. If you have, um, have a collection of bosons, um, there are very uh, little that they can do. They can form mm -hmm. crystal or a superfluid. Mm -hmm. The zero temperature. Mm -hmm. It would be interesting if you know, one can realize some more exotic phases, for example, um, super solid with, uh, with, uh, with some, say, isotope of helium. But, um, mm -hmm. but that's on, I don't know whether that is the case. Remember that for a capacitor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay, so any other questions? Uh, one, one more question. Sure. Just on this slide, you mentioned uh, the previous free energy does not apply after this happens. Why does it not apply? 
Well, I mean, um, the uh, the mean field theory always have um, have limitation. Actually, uh, it's a big limitation. I, we we actually don't know if if what we are saying um, are correct. The, the the transition between the phase diagram of helium to this uh, dilute pose gas can be more complicated than that. Just take the this seems to be just a, um, a way for us to guess the result. All that we have said here, this picture, for example, on this, this tricritical up here, move up, all that, I think, if I guess, I, I think that's, that's pretty much um, guaranteed something that, that, that will happen, but there is, I, I don't have a proof that it would happen. And so when we, reach this point um, uh, and we get, go further, nothing else happened. But, um, uh, but it could be that uh, the range of parameter, which we call T and H in the, uh, um, in the, um, in the uh, midfield theory is, uh, is uh, some of these values are non-physical. So that tricritical point might move to a place that basically doesn't exist. Um, so everything that um, we do with the mean field theory um, are simply um, trying to guess what the and the right answer would be. And the most um, the most um, compelling picture after this point is that now we can connect to the. Uh, the uh, unbinding phase transition of, uh, uh, when the scattering line goes to zero. Mm -hmm. So uh, theoretically from the mean field theory, can the mean field theory itself tell us it will break down at some point? I don't think so because um, unless, unless we have something like this picture, like this picture, the mean field theory actually can tell us that this cannot happen because um, we have more, need to fine tune more parameter than what we have. Yeah. Uh, but all the other diagrams are just possibilities and, 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 and there could be more complicated possibilities. I see, thanks. Yeah. Okay, any so other I questions? Ah, sorry, I have one quick question. And the, the, do you rely on the uh, quantum statistics or both statistics in the, your uh, discussion? Or can you apply your discussion also for the fermionic, the many body system? For fermions, uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm uh, less so sure about fermions. And, um, uh, what happened if I take helium three and change the the mass of, of helium uh, three? Um, I haven't thought about that. So, at which point do you use that uh, uh, bosonic nature of the system? So basically, we know what happened in usual helium, uh, and then we we guess how this line moves. Right. So we know that this helium uh, transition is superfluid phase transition is roughly a BC phase transition and the temperature must go up as we take the temperature to, uh, let's take the mass to zero. So it's qualitative arguments like that. Possibly that something like that can also be done in, for fermions. Hmm. Okay, any other questions? Please, if you have anyone else has any questions, please ask them. Maybe I'll wait like four seconds. Okay, so let's thank Professor Damson again. Thank you. So um, in the chat, I have the Google group link if you want to uh, get new emails about the next coming weeks. And of course, thank you, Professor Damson, for coming this week. It was an excellent talk. Oh. Thank you for your invitation. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.